Hello, it's uh, Mike Putman from uh, the Medical College of Wisconsin. I am reporting live from ACR 2022 uh, for a room now, and I am excited to be interviewing Dr. Uh, Robert Spira about an abstract that he's given that will be a plenary session. It is abstract number 1676, uh, and, and it discusses the uh, treatment of polymyalgia rheumatica with the interleukin-6 inhibitor Cerilimab. I'm very excited to hear about it. Uh, Dr. Spira, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. Uh, my name is Robert Spira. I'm a rheumatologist at Hospital for Special Surgery in New York and I'm thrilled to be able to talk about this abstract. Oh, well, it's an honor to interview you about this. I uh, first heard about this after ULAR, um, and I think it's a very exciting thing for us who do research in this area to see more things coming down the pipeline and polymyodramatic in particular. Uh, but would you like to tell us a little bit about the study? So who got into the study and how were they chosen? So there have been, as you know, a few studies in polymyalgia rheumatica recently published. This was a study that looked specifically at people with refractory polymyalgia rheumatica. So these were patients that had flared within three months of study entry while still on greater than seven and a half milligrams of daily prednisone. So that's a pretty common group of patients in practice that are a challenge. Um, they had long disease, so the median disease duration in these patients was about a year. Um, so it was what we thought was a patient group in whom there was this unmet need. Yeah, I uh, always tell my patients, you know, there's a bucket of people who do very well on a steroid taper. There's a bucket who have a couple of uh, blips along the way. And then there's some people who just have a protracted, frustrating course. And so it sounds like you're in that last group for the most part. Yes, that's yeah. who we were targeting. Uh, and so then why don't you tell us what you found? What was the, uh, the outcome of the study? So it was an interesting study. We hoped to enroll 280 patients. And because of the pandemic and the challenges to recruitment, um, we enrolled 118. Um, and I have to go into the study design a little bit because it was complicated. Do, yeah. So this was a refractory group of patients with polymyalgia rheumatica. <clears throat> the study drug was cerilumab, an IL-6 receptor antagonist. Patients were randomized to receive either cerilumab with a 14-week glucocorticoid taper. So that's a very fast, fast taper yeah. in a refractory group or a more conventional 52-week glucocorticoid taper. Uh -huh. um, and the primary outcome was sustained remission, which was, again, a high bar. You had to achieve remission by week 12. Mm -hmm. um, so for the cerulimab arm, you were only at about two milligrams of prednisone at that point. Mm -hmm. um, you had to remain in remission from week 12 to week 52. You had to have a normal CRP through the duration of that year. Mm -hmm. Um, and you had to have adhered to the glucocorticoid taper outlined by the protocol. So again, pretty high bar. And that high bar resulted in what seems like low response rates in both groups, but you have to look into it in a little bit of detail. So in the cerulimab-treated patients, 28% of patients achieved that. In the placebo-treated patients, only 10% of patients achieved that. If you censored CRP, and we all know that IL-6 inhibitors affect CRP, and investigators obviously were blinded to CRP, but in sensitivity analyses, even if you censored CRP, um, you actually had a slightly higher percentage of patients in the cerulimab arm achieve remission, like 31%, and in the placebo arm, about 13%. So it seemed to be not just an artifact of affecting the CRP. What I thought was actually most compelling about the data, you know, we all talk about steroid sparing and why that's important, and yeah. there was a steroid sparing benefit recognized. That was one of our secondary outcomes. So you received um, more than a gram less of steroids, about 1.2 grams less of steroids if you were randomized to cerulimab. Um, but I thought what was more important was the patient reported outcomes, which, you know, was not one of our primary or even secondary outcomes, but it was among the most important outcomes. So if you look at your SF36 or facet fatigue score or your HAC disability index, all of those favored the cerulimab arm at a statistically significant level. So, you know, one of the things with these steroid sparing drugs, you know, are we just trying to spare steroids or are we trying to meaningfully affect patients' quality of life and function? And I think that piece of it, to me, was super important um, as an outcome. The one other outcome measure, which you know is becoming more and more entrenched in trials in vasculitis and in polymyalgia, is the GTI. 
um, the glucocorticoid toxicity index. That numerically favored the cerulimab arm, but it didn't reach statistical significance, but that's probably because we under-recruited the trial in terms of the initial powering in terms of what would have allowed us to see that. Yeah. You also probably had fewer events in a group with PMR, which started on somewhat lower doses of steroids, so possibly less potential for toxicity. Absolutely. It's a yeah. little bit less of an issue than you might see in a GCA yeah. trial. Oh, that makes sense. So I, I love to hear that there are positive patient report outcome measures. That's a particular uh, focus of mine. And uh, you know we saw that in the JAX trial as well, where we saw that the patient report outcome measures were better. And that's one of the main reasons that I think it's an important drug to use. So uh, it's great that we saw that in PMR as well. And interesting. Yeah, I agree 100%. I thought with Jayacta that was one of our most compelling things. I think we have to show why a difference in steroid use is important, and I think that's been pretty consistent in our steroid sparing drug trials when we've spared steroids. We have seen those advantages. Yeah, no, I love it. I always say you got to live longer and live better, and if your PROs are better, you're living better. So one final question before I go. You know, this was on a group of relapsing refractory patients, so do you see this expanding, or do you think this will be more of a therapy that's limited to people who have failed therapies or failed to respond to therapies up front? So that's an interesting question. You know, in terms of who this trial spoke to, it's to these refractory patients. That's kind of where I think the unmet need is, because some patients do do very well. There were other trials, you know, the SPARE trial that was published um, looked at another IL-6 inhibitor, tocilizumab, and in that study, they looked at de novo PMR, so these were not refractory patients, and it seemed to have a steroid-sparing drug. So as a proof of principle, we have a few studies suggesting benefits. Semaphore was another trial of tocilizumab that looked at refractory PMR, a little bit different than this trial in that they allowed remission to be defined as still being on five milligrams of daily prednisone. Um, but I think we have multiple levels of evidence saying this strategy probably is relevant to this disease. Semaphore was with rituximab, correct? Semaphore that was also with was with yeah. tocilizumab. Tocilizumab yeah. as well. Okay, great. Yeah, there's the rituximab right there. Anyways, that's all very interesting. Um, thank you so much for coming to talk to us. I'm it looking was a forward. Pleasure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to your plenary, uh, and be sure to follow with Room Now for more great information from the annual meeting.